So very good morning students, we are in our regular class lecture on the subject is sedimentology. And the topic of discussion is the classification of sediment rocks and this is lecture 3 in this series. And for this topic I have referred the book The Introduction to Sedimentology by S.M. Singhupta. So let us get into the heading, the classification of sediment rock. As you know the sediment rock has its source from igneous or a sedimentary or even metamorphic rock that is why it is also known as the secondary rocks. So the pre-existing rock when exposed to the atmosphere it will undergo weathering after that what happens there will be erosion then also it is transported and it will be deposited somewhere right so the transported and deposited loose sediments are consolidated into sedimentary rocks by the process called as diagenesis the sedimentary rocks thus formed may be broadly divided into two groups that is exogenetic and endogenetic so let us see what is exogenetic and endogenetic exogenetic rocks are the product of fragments of the source rock that is formed outside the basin of the sedimentation whereas the endogenetic rocks are produced out of precipitation from the solution within the basin so in general the exogenetic rock or the fragments that is originated outside the basin and that has been transported to the basin whereas the endogenetic rocks are those which has been precipitated within the basin itself right so these are the two main difference the exogenetic and the endogenetic rocks can be distinguished by the texture so that is the main difference between them and they can be easily identified with the texture while the endogenetic rock shows interlocking or crystalline fabric that is also known as the non-plastic texture as you know it is formed due to the precipitation what happens there will be no free space or voids between the grains so that will be precipitated uh, to form a complete rock right so there will be no any voids and the minerals will be formed as interlocking so that is known as the non-plastic texture whereas the exogenetic rocks as you know it has been transported and it has been deposited redeposited in a new basin there will be grains and voids that will be present the grains are known as the framework grains which has been separated by the voids right the exogenetic rock texture is known as the clastic texture which is from the Greek term clasto that simply means broken. So the classification of sediment rocks into clastic and non-clastic though popular among the sedimentologists may at times lead to ambiguity. So the problem is that the chemical precipitated sediments for example may also be transported from a play or place of its origin and after fragmentation and redeposit elsewhere from the sedimentary rock. Such a rock although essentially endogenetic may show clastic texture. So this is what the ambiguity is. As we had already this, uh, mentioned that the exogenetic rock shows classic texture which has been transported whereas endogenetic rocks has been re uh, precipitated from uh, water that is from the solution and that will form as a uh, endogenetic rock. So the ambiguity is that uh, pre-precipitated rock if uh, weathered and transported and redeposited uh, what it can be or what it can be called as right so that is the ambiguity. And to avoid that such a confusion, Folk in 1968 introduced the following term that is the terrigenous, orthochemical and allochemical. So these are the three main terms which has been introduced by Folk in 1968 which could uh, get rid of this ambiguity. So let us see what it is. So the terrigenous rocks are produced from sedimentary derived from land area that is located outside the basin. So what we already mentioned as exogenetic rocks that will come under the term as terrigenous rock. So the process of derivation is purely mechanical, but not all, but not all terrigenous sediments are product of weathering and erosion. As you know, there are fragments from volcanic origin, or also even the glaciers can give us sediments, right? So these can also be uh, worked and redeposited, that can be formed as a sedimentary rock. So all these categories, that is, originated outside the basin and transported to the basin, will come under this category, that is, the terrigenous sediments or terrigenous rocks. The second one is the orthochemical or truly chemical rocks or produced by the chemical or biochemical precipitation within the basin, right? So that could be precipitated due to the change in the pressure temperature condition or maybe due to some biological activity that will form that is also uh, that is known as the orthochemical. Evaporates such as halides, anhydride, gypsum and non-evaporates such as limestone, dolomite and ironstone or example of such precipitates. And the intermediate between the terrigenous and orthochemical rocks are the allochemical rocks that is also known as the false that is allo simply means false chemical rocks. This is produced initially within the basin by chemical precipitation 
These rocks are fragmented, transported and redeposited elsewhere. Both terrigenous and allochemical rocks shows clastic texture and only the orthochemical rocks shows the non-clastic texture. So this classification will be quite easy to use and you can also identify with this classification with the help of the microscope or even in the field also you can find out if you find out the texture, right? Okay, the sediments of chemical and terrigenous origin may be combined to form rocks of hybrid nature. So this is a new variety that is called as hybrid rock. Whereas calcareous and carbonaceous shales are some of the example of this hybrid rock, which is as you know, the calcareous and carbonaceous probably deposited that is uh, precipitated within the basin, whereas shale indicates it has been transported elsewhere. So this type of rock is called as hybrid rock. While accepting the rationality of folk scheme of classification, it must be appreciated that the term clastic and non-clastic have thoroughly poured sedimentological literature and cannot be totally ignored. So we can use clastic and non-clastic or you can also go for folk classification that is terrigenous, allochemical, or orthochemical, right? Of all the major group of sedimentary rocks found in the earth, only three that is the sandstone, shale and limestone together occurs as 95% of the total sediment rock that is present in the earth crust, right? Theoretical calculating based on the idea that the average chemical composition of the sedimentary rocks must match the average composition of the igneous rock, right? So that is the primary, that is the source rock from which sediment rocks has been formed. So with this concept, they are calculated and they are given a result that shale will be having 81 in the sand, that is in the sediment rock, shale will be having a dominance that is by 81 percentage, followed by sandstone by just 11 percentage and then the limestone by 8 percentage. So this is a theoretical concept proposed by Garrels and McKenzie in 1971. But actual measure of the stratigraphic record shows a smaller proportion of shale is present and a higher proportion of sandstone and limestone is present, which is proposed by Petitjohn in 1975. So with this I am concluding this class, there is a classification of sediment rock and our next video will be the classification of mechanical origin, then you will go for chemical origin, right? So with this I am concluding this class, thank you.